definition of diabetes pilitis it is a heterogeneous group of diseases all characterized by a state of chronic hyperglycemia which can result from diversity of etiologies both environmental and genetic the underlying cause is defective amount or action of insulin because insulin controls the metabolism of glucose fat and amino acids diabetes mellitus is characterized by a deranged metabolism of these three the resulting hyperglycemia when becomes chronic leads to a number of complications cardiovascular complications renal neurological ocular others like intracranial infection etc the who has classified diabetes into di frank diabetes mellitus impaired glucose tolerance and gestational diabetes mellitus when the diabetes is detected for the first time during pregnancy the frank diabetes mellitus is of four types type 1 diabetes mellitus type 2 diabetes mellitus malnutrition related diabetes mellitus and other types secondary diabetes mellitus due to due to this destruction of pancreatic cells etc type 1 diabetes mellitus also known as insulin dependent diabetes mellitus it is the most severe form of disease the onset is typically abrupt and usually seen in, in young individuals unless it is promptly diagnosed and managed it can be lethal in the very first presentation itself in more than 90% of cases it is immune mediated and in the remaining cases the cause is not known there is destruction of beta cells of pancreas but the rate of destruction is variable from sudden destruction of a large number of beta cells to slow destruction and hence slow progression it is usually associated with ketosis even before the treatment begins and treatment is required to control the ketosis the highest incidence occurs among 10 to 14 years of age it is a catabolic disorder because insulin is absent and high levels of glucagon is present the pancreatic beta cells fail to respond to all insulinogenic stimuli because they are destroyed so usually exogenous insulin is required to reverse the catabolic state to prevent ketosis to reduce the glucagon levels and blood glucose type 2 diabetes mellitus also known as non insulin dependent diabetes mellitus is much more common than type 1 and is so slow in onset that it is often discovered by chance onset is typically gradual and it occurs mainly in the middle aged and the elderly frequently mild and slow to reach ketosis if the blood glucose is adequately maintained it is compatible with long term survival other diseases like hypertension chd frequently coexist impaired glucose tolerance is a state which is not frankly diabetes but is not even normal the blood glucose is slightly high this is an at risk group this group is at risk of developing diabetes mellitus later on and this can be diagnosed only by oral glucose tolerance test insulin resistance syndrome or syndrome x is coexistence of few metabolic disorders it is also known as multiple metabolic syndrome these metabolic disorders which coexist are dyslipidemia hypertension insulin resistance hyperinsulinemia hyperglycemia that is type 2 diabetes mellitus and obesity insulin resistance syndrome occurs commonly in the general population and basically genetic insulin resistance is thought to be the primary cause in syndrome x and this insulin resistance is exaggerated by obesity the mechanism in insulin resistance syndrome 
has been proposed that genetic insulin resistance leads to hyperglycemia which leads to increased amount of insulin levels in blood that is hyperinsulinemia which leads to increased sodium retention by renal tubules this increased sodium retained leads to hypertension high levels of insulin also directly lead to endothelial proliferation which initiates atherosclerosis in the arteries world scenario of diabetes mellitus diabetes mellitus is a typical iceberg disease that is only a small percentage of diabetics are clinically known to be diabetics a large percentage still remains undiagnosed there has been an increase in prevalence and incidence of diabetes throughout the world but this increase has been more dramatic in societies which are in economic transition and in developing countries more than 80% of deaths due to diabetes occur in low and middle income countries the prevalence was 10% among 25 year old and above in 2008 In WHO regions the highest prevalence is in eastern Mediterranean region and the Americas and the lowest prevalence was found in European region and western Pacific region the prevalence was low in low income countries and higher in upper and middle income countries the prevalence was twice in urban areas compared to rural areas Migrant studies show that Asians have a genetic vulnerability to develop diabetes mellitus and the prevalence in India, Bangladesh and Indonesia have increased considerably in last few years. Diabetes is associated with long term complications like stroke, coronary heart disease, renal disease, diabetic retinopathy, diabetic neuropathy, these complications deteriorate the quality of life and can result in premature death for example lower limb amputations is 10 times more common in diabetics than in non diabetics despite these complications the awareness regarding diabetes mellitus and prevention of its complications remains inadequate among populations the death rates are considerably higher among diabetics compared to non diabetics among caucasians that is the white skinned european origin coronary heart disease is the major complication which leads to fatality in diabetics whereas among american and asian populations it is the renal disease which is the complication which causes maximum mortality among diabetics in certain poor developing countries it is infection which is the main cause of death among diabetes type 2 diabetes mellitus is a silent killer whereas type 1 diabetes presents suddenly and dramatically and may often result in death in the initial stages itself type 1 diabetes mellitus prevalence it was lower in asia compared to the other world indian scenario migrant studies have shown that indian population has a higher susceptibility to diabetes mellitus and estimated 2.2 million disability adjusted life years were lost due to diabetes mellitus in 2004 still there is paucity of data on diabetes mellitus in india so we do not exactly know the prevalence and incidence of the disease we do not know the rates Hence, a registry was established in 2006 by Indian Council of Medical Research. The registry is known as Registry of People with Diabetes with Young Age at Onset, in short, YDR. Registry is basically a database wherein all the cases, an effort is made to record all the cases which fit in the description. In this case. people who are diagnosed with diabetes 
at young age. YDR was established by Indian Council of Medical Research in 2006. The idea was to understand the magnitude and pattern of diabetes mellitus among the young in the country. Presently, there are eight collaborating centers which report patients from their own hospital and other institutions attached who report to them. There are two centers in Delhi, one each in Chennai, Katak, Dibrugarh, two centers in Mumbai and one in Chandigarh. Epidemiology of diabetes mellitus obviously in terms of agent, host and environmental factors. The agent, the underlying cause of diabetes mellitus is insulin deficiency which is absolute in type 1 diabetes mellitus and partial or relative deficiency in type 2 diabetes mellitus. The deficiency of insulin can be due to pancreatic disease like inflammation, neoplasm, etc. Defect in the type of insulin synthesized. Destruction of beta cells by viral infections or chemical agents. Decreased sensitivity to insulin. That is the number of receptors for insulin are decreased. Or autoimmunity to insulin molecule or beta cell receptors, beta cells. The effect of insulin deficiency, whether absolute or partial, is reduced utilization of glucose, resulting in hyperglycemia and glycosuria. Host factors Age Prevalence of type 2 diabetes rises with age and rises steeply. Type 2 diabetes mellitus is usually detected in the middle age and type 1 usually in the young. Malnutrition related diabetes mellitus affects young children and the prognosis is worse in young diabetics because they are not only exposed to hyperglycemia for a longer time, they tend to develop complications earlier. Sex. In some countries, the prevalence of diabetes is equal in both the genders but in Southeast Asia more male diabetics are seen than female. Genetic factors. The genetic nature of diabetes is undisputed. Type 2 diabetes has a stronger genetic component than type 1. Some genetic markers have been associated with type 1 diabetes mellitus. Type 2 diabetes mellitus is not associated with any HLA type. Their defective immunological mechanisms under some environmental trigger, they attack their own beta cells and destroy them in type 1 diabetes mellitus. Both cell mediated and humoral immunity can be involved in destruction of beta cells. Obesity. Obesity is definitely a risk factor for type 2 diabetes mellitus. Obesity as defined by a high BMI. The risk of diabetes mellitus rises with both the degree of obesity and the duration of obesity, especially central obesity. Central obesity means a high waist-hip ratio. In fact, waist-hip ratio is a more powerful risk factor than only BMI. Central obesity has also been seen to lead to insulin resistance. Obesity reduces the receptors for insulin on the target cells and voluntary weight loss has been shown to reduce the risk of diabetes mellitus in pre-diabetics that is impaired glucose tolerant cases. Physical inactivity itself in itself is also a risk factor apart from giving rise to obesity. But obesity appears to have no role in the pathogenesis of type 1 diabetes mellitus. Maternal diabetes is also a risk factor. Babies born to diabetic mothers, whether they developed diabetes for the first time in pregnancy, that is gestational diabetes mellitus, or became pregnant while they were already diabetic. The babies born to diabetic mothers are often large and heavy at birth. They tend to develop obesity in childhood. 
and hence are at high risk of develop developing type 2 diabetes at an early age. Babies who are born to mothers with pre-existing diabetes mellitus are three times at higher risk for developing diabetes mellitus compared to those who are born to the same mother but before she developed diabetes mellitus. Even if the newborn of a diabetic mother is a low birth weight, but if he catches up growth rapidly, the risk of diabetes mellitus is higher than those born to non-diabetic mother. Environmental factors Genetic susceptibility may be unmasked by the environmental factors. Number one is sedentary lifestyle. It is definitely a risk factor for type 2 diabetes mellitus. Lack of physical exercise somehow alters the interaction between insulin and its receptors. Intake of dietary fat. High saturated fat intake is a risk factor. Higher proportion of saturated fatty acids in serum lipids have been associated with higher amounts of fasting insulin, lower insulin sensitivity and a, therefore a high risk of developing type 2 diabetes mellitus. On the other hand, higher proportion of unsaturated fatty acids and polyunsaturated fatty acids as a, in the serum lipids is associated with lower fasting glucose and increased insulin sensitivity has a decreased risk for diabetes mellitus. It has been seen that long chain polyunsaturated fatty acids are as effective as monounsaturated fatty acids. But if the total fat intake is high, that is more than 37% of calories are taken as fat, then it does not matter what type of fat is taken, it increases the risk of diabetes mellitus as such. Dietary fiber, a high intake, appears to decrease the risk of diabetes mellitus. A minimum daily intake of 20 grams has been recommended for decreasing the risk. Malnutrition, protein energy malnutrition in infancy may result in partial failure of beta cell function and it has been seen that some cases of Kaushyorkar have impaired carbohydrate tolerance. Alcohol intake. Excessive alcohol intake may, dam may damage pancreas and liver and also promotes obesity and hence increases the risk of diabetes mellitus. Certain viral infections like rubella, mumps, etc. can destroy beta cells. Certain chemical agents and poisons can destroy beta cells thereby causing diabetes mellitus stress of any kind trauma surgery or even stressful situations can be diabetogenic diabetes has been associated with various other factors like type of occupation marital status religion etc now a higher prevalence of diabetes mellitus has been observed in lower social classes which was a rare thing to see around 50 years ago As previously discussed, diabetes is an iceberg disease and hence there is a need for screening. What tests can be used for screening for diabetes? One can be urine examination that is urine test for presence of glucose 2 hours after a meal. And those who are found to be positive for urine glucose can be considered as diabetic. But a majority of type 2 diabetics do not have glucose in uh, urine and hence can be missed. In fact, the sensitivity of the test is so low so as to detect 10% of cases to the maximum of 50% of cases. That is from 90% of cases may be missed out if only urine is used for screening of diabetes. So that means a high percentage of false negatives will be yield and the sensitivity is very low. 
on the other hand the specificity is very high that is if a person is positive for glucose in the urine one can be more than 90% sure that the person is diabetic because of its low sensitivity urine testing is not considered appropriate tool for screening if it is to leave out 90% of patients of diabetes then what is the use of screening test testing for the levels of blood sugar diagnosis of diabetes is made on standard oral glucose tolerance test for screening if only one test is to be used then it is 2r blood sugar after 75 grams of oral glucose this may be combined with a fasting value also if the resources permit only fasting blood glucose is not a reliable test for screening for diabetes because it cannot be ensured that the person is actually fasting random blood sugar is not satisfactory for screening mass screening that is screening in the whole population is not an efficient tool because the yield will be very low but screening of high risk groups is much more efficient hence screening is recommended for high risk group which include those who are aged more than 40 years family history of diabetes mellitus the obese women who have had a baby with a birth weight of more than 4 kg women with excess weight gain during pregnancy and patients with premature atherosclerosis this table shows the diagnostic criteria that is the cut off values of blood sugar for diagnosis of diabetes a fasting blood glucose of more than 126 mg per deciliter or a 2 hours plasma glucose more than 200 mg per deciliter for impaired glucose tolerance that is not frank diabetes but not normal also fasting blood glucose of less than 126 mg per deciliter but 2r plasma glucose less than 200 mg per deciliter but more than 140 mg per deciliter shows impaired glucose tolerance and a high risk of developing diabetes later on similarly impaired fasting glucose means a fasting glucose of more than 110 mg per deciliter but less than 125 and if a 2 r plasma glucose is measured then it is less than 140 mg of deciliter that is definitely not in diabetic range the preceding table showed the cut off values for diagnosis of diabetes and intermediate hyperglycemia so we know that for normal c a fasting glucose plasma glucose of less than 110 mg per deciliter and a 2r plasma glucose of less than 140 mg per deciliter can safely be called as non diabetic currently hba1c is not considered to be a suitable diagnostic test but only for testing the long term control of sh- blood sugar prevention in diabetes mellitus first primary prevention that is preventing diabetes from occurring all together two strategies can be talked about in primary prevention that is population strategy and high risk strategy population strategy the scope of primary prevention is limited because the current knowledge regarding natural history is inadequate the only prevention that can be taken at mass population level is primordial prevention that is preventing the occurrence of risk factor risk factors in the population like maintenance of normal body weight that is preventing obesity becoming rampant in the population encouraging adequate intake of protein encouraging high intake of fiber encouraging avoiding the sweet foods etc measures which can prevent the risk factors of diabetes from occurring in the population the high risk strategy of primary prevention diabetes mellitus that is identification of groups 
who have a higher risk for developing diabetes mellitus and removing this risk factor so as to prevent diabetes mellitus in future. For type 1 diabetes mellitus, no high risk groups are recognized and hence it is not possible, primary prevention is not possible for type 1 diabetes mellitus. For type 2 diabetes mellitus, the risk factors, some of the risk factors are known and correction of these risk factors can prevent to some extent occurrence of diabetes mellitus later on. Correcting sedentary lifestyle, getting rid of obesity, abstinence from alcohol and those individuals who have a higher risk to avoid diabetogenic drugs. Secondary prevention in diabetes mellitus that is once diabetes mellitus has been detected in the individual then proper maintenance of blood glucose levels within normal limits as much as possible. Maintenance of ideal body weight and self-care. For maintenance of blood glucose levels, the treatment can be diet alone, diet and oral anti-diabetic drugs or diet and insulin. Glycosylated hemoglobin that is HbA1c has to be estimated every 6 months to monitor long term blood glucose control. Self care is a crucial element in management of diabetes mellitus and it includes adherence to the prescribed diet, adherence to the prescribed drug regimen, regular urine examination, regular blood glucose monitoring, regular self-administration of insulin if it is required, abstinence from alcohol, maintaining optimum weight, attending periodic checkups in diabetic clinics, recognition of symptoms of glycosuria and hypoglycemia, regular foot care, etc. Home blood glucose monitoring has emerged as a very important helpful tool for monitoring blood glucose and maintaining within normal limits because it the results are immediate, reasonably accurate and it measures the capillary blood glucose by glucometers or by using strips which directly measure the amount of plasma glucose. Patient should carry an identification card mentioning that he is a diabetic and that what are the drugs that person is taking and the address and etc. Patient should acquire a working knowledge regarding diabetes mellitus and the family members should also be educated about the symptoms of hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia and regarding the care of a diabetic family member. Tertiary prevention in diabetes involves prevention of disabilities which occur due to complications of diabetes mellitus. These complications are blindness due to diabetic retinopathy, kidney failure because of diabetic nephropathy, coronary thrombosis, gangrene of lower extremities etc. So this involves regular visits to diabetic clinics and research, furthering research into prevention of these complications and the first step in the research is establishing local and national registry for diabetes mellitus because the basic statistics are the basic requirement for any research. This is a summary of the lifestyle risk factors for diabetes mellitus and this is a summary of preventive interventions possible in diabetes mellitus.